I'm Adrian, M0 and WK, and in this short video I'm going to show you how I etch my printed circuit boards using press and peel film. Before we begin you'll need an iron, some ferrite chloride, a piece of printed circuit board, some rubber gloves, a black permanent pen, a piece of wire wool, a newspaper, glass bowl, a sheet of paper and some press and peel film. I purchased my press and peel film from Maplins. This particular brand is designed for laser printers and photocopiers. The paper has a dull side and a shiny side. And it's very important that you print to the dull side. Here's some that I printed earlier. When you buy a new piece of printed circuit board, it comes with a protective film and that film is to protect the copper underneath from any corrosion. It's also likely that it'll have dirt and things like finger marks on the top surface, so it's very important before we proceed that we remove the protective coating and we also make sure that we clean the surface thoroughly. To remove the protective coating, I'm using a piece of wire wool and just make small circles and then run the wire wool across the board removing all of the coating. When all of the coating is removed, I move the wire wall in one direction so that we've got a key across the board. Now, it's very likely that you'll have pieces of wire wool and dust, so I finish off by just cleaning the circuit board with PCB cleaner. And the end result is that you should have a very nice board. It's now time to iron the press and peel film onto the printed circuit board. So I've got my piece of newspaper and I sit my PCB on top. Carefully position my press and peel film and taking my sheet of paper, carefully lay it across. Just making sure that there's no, nothing that's moved. Taking a preheated iron, I place that on top and the manufacturers recommend a temperature between 275 and 325 degrees Fahrenheit for best results. Now I don't have a temperature gauge on my iron so I've just put it on full heat and I've also turned the steam off. Now what I'm not going to do is press heavily onto the board, I'm just going to leave it there for a few minutes. The iron's been on the PCB for about three minutes now, so I'm just going to remove that and the piece of paper. And the circuit board obviously will be very hot, so we'll just pick that up and have a look. So you can see how the press and peel film looks after the heat supplied. And what we're going to do now is just cool down the board and quench the press and peel film in water. So I'm just going to drop that into a bowl of cold water. I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes to cool down. The board's been in the cold water for a couple of minutes now, so that has cooled that down. So I'm just going to remove the water and taking a knife and starting in one corner, I'm just going to lift the press and peel film and very carefully peel it from the board. It's very important that you do this slowly and carefully to make sure as much of the film adheres to the board as possible. Okay, so just looking at the results you can see that quite a lot of the surface area is covered but we are going to have to touch up with the marker pen because there are some areas around here which which haven't adhered to the PCB. So we'll sort that with the with the marker pen. Taking my black permanent Sharpie pen, I'm just working my way through the board, making sure that the areas that haven't adhered are touched up with the pen. And if there are areas of copper which I am covering up with the with the permanent marker I will go over those once and then leave them to dry and then I'll come and give them a second coat. 
I've finished going over the board with the permanent marker pen and I'm happy with the results. So what I've done now is put on some rubber gloves. I've also got some goggles and I'm going to take my ferrite chloride solution, carefully open the bottle and pour some of the fluid into my plus into my glass bowl. I'm then going to place the printed circuit board into the solution and just carefully move the dish around until all of the board is covered in solution. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave that for a few minutes and I'll check on the progress. The important thing is to keep the board moving and to make sure that new solution covers the board. So I'm going to probably return and do this every few minutes for the next 30 minutes. The printed circuit board's been in the ferrite chloride for about half an hour and if we just kind of move that across you can see that the copper has been removed from the board. So carefully with my gloves I'm just going to remove the board from the solution. Let's give that a quick wipe and I'm just going to go outside and rinse this off on the outside tap. Okay so washing it under the water outside has removed all the ferrite chloride from the board and you can see now where all the copper has been removed from all the surface of the board. So there's only one thing left to do now and that's to remove the film and I do this by using a piece of wire wool. You don't have to press too hard to scrape that from the board and you can start seeing the copper surface underneath coming through. Make sure all of the film is removed. Give that a clean off. And there you have it, one circuit board being etched. And that's now ready for trimming and ready for my project.